think about when I was 16, I heard the Guarneri Quartet play. They came to, to Seattle, and, and uh, I just thought Michael Tree was just the greatest violist, and so I wanted to study with him. And he taught at Curtis, and so I went and auditioned uh, for Curtis. But before I auditioned for Curtis, uh, my mother and I drove up to Vancouver, B.C. when I was 17, a year later. I had always wanted to play in a quartet, and when I grew up, I would read chamber music with people like uh, Mark Sokol, who became the first violinist in the Concord Quartet. Uh, you know, with Norm Vischer and Andy Jennings, who teach at Tanglewood, and Mark does now too, he teaches there. Um, they, in, the, in the quartet seminar, and you know, it was just a blast. And I played with Mark's uh, sisters. Uh, they all played musical instruments. And the, Mr. Sokol, Mark's father, was actually the conductor of the Seattle Youth Symphony. So there was a connection there. And they were the, you know, the, the big musical family in, in Seattle. Uh, by family, I mean, you know, all these kids, and they all played in the Youth Symphony, and it was, it was really fun. 80s and the 90s, I, I, I was touring with my quartet. We were working hard, we won some prizes, and we were able to have an international career. So we played all over the world. I think we averaged around probably 70 concerts a year for about 15 or 16 years, something like that. I, you know, I did some summer music festivals, and I was at a summer music festival, I think it was maybe in 1995, and I was with, uh, playing with somebody who is well known here at the Boston Symphony, Mary Lou Speaker Churchill, who unfortunately passed away, I think, several years ago. And it was music corda, as a matter of fact. And I played in a string trio with Mary Lou and a fellow by the name of Michael Haber, the cellist. And she said to me, she said, Steve, you know, the Boston Symphony, we, we don't have a principal violist right now, and, and they're looking for people to fill in. Would, would you be interested in filling in sometime? And I said, oh, sure. I, th I thought that would be fun. As a matter of fact, it sort of excited me because I actually missed the sounds and the colors from the orchestra. You know, you, you play in a string quartet, and a string quartets are great, but, you know, it's just a small little picture of what, what's possible in, 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 even in classical music. I remember the first piece I played with the, with the Boston Symphony was the Shostakovich Seventh Symphony. And I think that fellow Girgiv was, was conducting it. And one of the violinists, whom I knew from Curtis, actually, Sheila Fakovsky, she came up to me after the, after the first or second rehearsal, and she said, gee, she said, you know, the viola section just sounds fantastic. I looked at her, I said, well, Sheila, it's the Boston Symphony, what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> we have an absolutely wonderful section. We, we have a great hall. The orchestra is incredible. The st you know, the standards of each individual in the orchestra are very, very high. Everybody takes the music home before the first rehearsal. Everybody practices. Everybody knows the music. Uh, they're, they're very, you know, if you, it always amazed me if you just go down, for instance, the first violin section and you just look at each one. I mean, any of these people could be, or not the first violin section, but the, the violin section, period. Any of these people could be concertmaster you know, just about anywhere, maybe, you know, lots and lots of orchestras, but they're all here. And it's it just, it's, it's just stunning. It's just the, the, the talent that we have in this orchestra, not, not just in the strings, but I mean, it, just everything, you know, it's just from soup to nuts. It's, there's so many outstanding individuals, and, and I mean, I can't, I just can't say enough about it. There is something about the hall that's, I think, partial in a certain way to the lower strings. And that's very helpful because, you know, the, you'll always hear the higher instruments. And you don't always hear the middle instruments. I think the clarinet sounds unbelievable in Symphony Hall. And, you know, we're kind of in the clarinet register. Also a little bit the bassoon, but, you know, you can play so softly in Symphony Hall and still have that, just that great quality. The sound of the Boston Symphony has a little bit to do with that. The section needs to blend together. If they need my sound as sort of a focal point, or they, if I feel like I need to lead somehow with a cue, then I'll do that. But otherwise, I try to let things just sort of happen and let them blend. The most important thing is for people to listen, not just to themselves, but, and not just to our section, 
to everything that's going on in the orchestra. I have three children. My, my eldest is 23 and my, my youngest is 15. And so, you know, my wife and I are always interested in the children and in our family and our extended family. So that's one of my interests is my family. My hobby really is playing bridge. I love to play bridge. It's, it's a little bit obscure. It's a little kind of like playing chess. Um, but there's, you know, there's, an, uh, there's, there's a national and international aspects to it. And um, I've played in some national tournaments. And um, I play, I try to play once a week if I can. But I'm a, you know, I, I really enjoy um, the cards and, and everything to do with it. I've, I have a steady partner. Um, a lot of people who play bridge are retired. Um, I'm not retired, so I don't have as much time as some people would, but uh, I still, I still, I'm, I, I like to play competitively. I, I enjoy tournaments, um, and it's, it's good, it's good for your mind. You gotta, you know, keep 52 cards in your, you know, gotta got keep a lot of things in your mind, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, keeps you, keeps you on your toes. Mm -hmm.